So this video is about the triangle of forces specifically on inclined planes. But before we start talking about inclined planes, let's not incline the plane. Let's just go on flat ground. So we have some flat ground, we have a person on it. Now because the person weighs something and because there's this thing called gravity, the person exerts a force on the ground. Now for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every force, there is an equal and opposite force. Newton said that. So there is another force acting in the other direction, right? Equal and opposite, that's equal to that. Uh, we call that the normal contact force. That thing has to exist. If there is no normal contact force, then this person would just fall through the earth, right? There's nothing stopping them from just going... Okay, normal contact force, it's a thing. So, now we have an inclined plane. We have this object sitting on this inclined plane. Now, because mass, because gravity, we have a force acting directly down. And you know that for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. Done. So, we need the normal contact force. But the normal contact force always acts at right angles to the plane. Right? So, we actually end up with a normal contact force that looks like that. And you are hopefully looking at this and saying that doesn't work for me because we're supposed to have a force and an equal and opposite force. These are not equal and opposite, right? Then this one's not going straight up. This one's going straight down. This one's not going that way. That is a problem. Okay, so how do we overcome this? Well, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, what's going on here? is we can take this gravity force, if we want to, and break it into two other forces, right? We can turn it, if we look at like the I and the J components, like this and like this, we can take this, turn our head to the side, and say, okay, this is my I component, this is my J component, and this J component is going to line up with this J component. And then you might say, okay, well, that's equal, this is equal this. I can get behind that, that's fine. But what about this thing? What's this doing? Well, if we don't add anything else to this picture, this thing is going to make this thing slide down here. And then you might be thinking, wait, I thought we were going to talk about triangle of forces. If that thing's sliding down there, it's not in equilibrium. So let's put it in equilibrium by attaching it to here by a string. Okay, so a string is holding it up. Now we're in equilibrium. We have a force, we have a, fo we have a force matching up with a force, we have a force matching up with a force. And everything, this equals this, and this equals this. I know the lengths aren't the same, but that doesn't matter because the force is what matters. The tension here, the tension here, however you want to look at it. Okay, and now you might be looking at this going, whoa, hang on a minute. Um, triangle of forces, we want three forces, but I've just created four. All right, so what's going on? Well, this force I've chosen to break it into two, right? I don't have to choose to do that. What we do know for a fact, though, is that there are three forces acting on this object, this force, mass, gravity, this force, the normal contact force, and the tension in the string. And the object is not going anywhere. So if the object is not going anywhere and there are three forces acting on it, the object must be in equilibrium and we can take these three forces and create a triangle of forces from them. So it's been a long trip to get to an actual question. So let's like do an actual question. So it's worked example time. There's a 30 degree angle here and my object weighs 10 kilograms, right? Now, breaking this up into I and J components, not useful for what we're trying to do here. So let's get rid of that. So this is the question, um, 30 degree angle, 10 kilogram weight, and then the question is, find the tension in the string holding this thing together. Now, at this point, you can essentially forget that there's an inclined plane here altogether. 
We're back in familiar territory with an object and three forces. So now we're just sliding things about. Okay, so what happens? Well, I take this one and I slide it up to there. If I take this one and slide it up to here, it looks like that. And I've got a nice 90 degree angle there. Okay, if I take these two and slide them down here together, right? Things are looking a bit wonky, but hopefully you get the idea. That 90 degree angle came down with me. This angle is clearly 30 degrees, right? Because the string is in line with the inclined plane, which is this in line with this one here. So that's 30 degrees because that's 30 degrees, which means that this is 60 degrees, which means that this is 30 degrees. So taking this, bringing it over here, we have a length of 10, we have a 60 degree angle here, we have a right angle there, and obviously a 30 degree angle there. And the thing that we're trying to find is the tension in the string, which is this thing right here. Um, now, just like I did in the last video, there's no point in me trying to work this out. You know how to use, in this case, you can actually use right angle trigonometry to find that tension right there. What's important is understanding that when you've got an inclined plane like this, you can use the, um, the weight here, you can use the normal contact force, and whatever tension happens to be holding it up, it could be a string holding it up, it could actually just be friction, this could be a rough surface, and you're finding out how much friction is being applied to this object to keep it steady. But once you've got one, two, three forces, you can then take those three forces, slide them about to create your triangle of forces, and go from there. Done.